Hello and welcome back to G Senjo no Mao. Alright, uh Asai Kyosuke is getting a splitting headache and yeah, we all know what that means. He is turning into Mao again. It's it's really similar to Dr. Hyde more or less, even though he didn't drink any cocktail to go split personality. But anyway, let's go on. She was exhausted. Tsubaki thought she might be getting sick. Dad, has the study been packed up yet? Her family was busy preparing to move. Tsubaki was taking care of the kids, toys and the books in the bedroom, tying stacks of them together with twine. Hey, Dad, are you listening? Ah, Suman Suma! I'm doing it now! Look, Hiroaki, just wait a minute. Oh, sorry, I'll get it tidied up right away. Hiroaki, make way. Voices bathed in joy poured forth from the study. A father and his son were happily building the new plastic model together. The tension that Tsubaki's father had accumulated had all but dissipated after Hiroaki's return yesterday. He sat by Hiroaki's side and played with him for hours on end, disregarding his assigned duties. Tsubaki understood his feelings very well, so she held her tongue. She was currently still busy playing the role of her sick mother taking care of the whole family's chores. She cooked, washed laundry, crooned her siblings to sleep, poured beer for her father, and now spent a few peaceful moments packing up for the move. Wow. Suddenly, Tsubaki began to question her endless work. <laughs> Oh, hey, Sai, sleep under the sheets, not on them. Washroom, it's right there. Gosh. She used a harsher tone than she meant to. She said things she didn't mean to say. What's happening to me? Mao is molding you into a human, as he would say. Nothing should have changed for her. As the eldest daughter of the Miwa family, Tsubaki has always done chores like the cooking and the laundry. Taking care of her siblings for her sick mother was only natural. She had even gotten a kick out of her father's subtle nagging and complaints back in the day. Tsubaki began to search her thoughts for the reason behind her change. Her wandering mind settled once more on that man. The unforgettable whispers of the devil assailed her from her memory. I will mold you into a human. He said this to her as she went around the city with the ransom. After that they had secretly rendezvoused twice. In the end, what had Hiroaki's kidnapper wanted with Tsubaki? He seemed to have a liking for psychology. As a result, Tsubaki's heart had been scooped out numerous times without her even realizing it. Tsubaki thought that she would like to meet him again someday. If she did, she'd have the chance to take out all her melancholy on him. She wanted to burden him with the feelings within her, which brought forth such anger and regret. But at the same time, Tsubaki felt indescribable uneasiness toward her hatred of another person. At that moment, her prayers were answered. Her cell phone rang. How does he have 
Oh no, you didn't bought the new cell phone yet. This was the phone the kidnapper had provided her. She had wanted to scrap it, but never managed to, deciding instead to keep it nearby at all times. She pressed it tightly between her hands. After affirming that her family hadn't noticed, she pressed the talk button with hesitation. The receiver remained silent. She quietly said hello. It's been a while. That strange familiar voice reached her ears. It was the kidnapper. I want to talk to you. I understand. She, she acquiesced to this desires right away. Maybe this was the moment she had been waiting for, and now I am getting a splitting headache all of a sudden, and my neck hurts for some reason. Ah, don't know why. Tsubaki walked silently under the winter sky. It's a shame, really, but this will be the last time I contact you. The criminal had waited for the right time to speak. Is Hiroaki-kun doing well? Yes, very. As if he's completely forgotten about ever being in prison. Come on now, I wouldn't call that imprisonment. It was more akin to guarding him. It would be a pity if it caused any psychological damage. Well, a stranger choking me until I pass out would be psychological damage, wouldn't it? Was it a joke or was he serious? The criminal acted as if he had done the boy a favor. I hope you haven't called the police. Of course not. I think you already know this, but I'd like to remind you that I could push your family into the pit of despair any time I want. This voice permitted no denial. Tsubaki took a deep breath and asked, so, what is it? I want to forget you as soon as possible. Lies. She wouldn't be able to forget about this man even if she tried. I just want to confirm one thing before we part. Confirm? Tsubaki held her breath. The kidnapper continued. Do you hate me? He used a provocative tone. Really? A provocative? Sorry. Tsubaki's head felt as if it had been pummeled by a blunt object. She found herself tongue-tied. So I see. You do. Mao laughed with satisfaction. <laughs> However, we won't be meeting again. Even if the police join the investigation, you won't be able to follow my trail. Tsubaki's knees nearly buckled under her. This evildoer was about to disappear. Who could she take these suppressed feelings out on? Before I go, 
Let me say one last thing. You've only been caught in the middle of this. This is nowhere near my true goal. What is your true goal? Haven't you guessed it? A friend, someone very close to you. Tsubaki finally understood, and the name escaped her lips. Then suddenly, the chim of the dial tone echoed in Tsubaki's ear. <laughs> the devil's whispers vanished into the wind. Only the sound of her own breath reached Tsubaki as she stood there, motionless, in the cold. Sonna. How could this... She gripped the cell phone tightly. Her lips quivered and her brow furrowed. Furrowed. Did I already wrote this down? It's furrowed. No, I didn't. Honestly, I haven't looked up any of the words recently, which is kind of a shame, I would say. But I should really pick up to this, but I just don't really feel like it right now. An impulse to scream waged in her mind. Dirty emotions gathered in her heart all directed at a dear friend. That girl likes Kyosuke too, she thought. Tsubaki couldn't control these feelings. Tsubaki decided that her past self had indeed been the distorted one. She became the class representative simply because people had asked her to. She had cleaned up for friends when they shirked their duties. She put her young brother as her top priority, spent all her time and allowance on the people around her, and never kept enough money to buy what she herself wanted. She had been granted the stigma of a kind person, and she never thought twice about it. Desire slowly crept into that forced smile of hers. Tsubaki sank into a sea of daydreams. She wanted to wear nicer clothes, to play freely, to... Desires befitting any girl her age continued to surface in Tsubaki's heart, one by one, as she slowly returned to her room. Wait, what? Chapter... When did we enter chapter 2? Oh, we, we are... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I know we are in Chapter 2. I was just perusing through my recordings and I only had a folder for Chapter 1. So I got confused there for a second. Kyosuke-chan, listen. Kyosuke-chan. Wait, this was weird. Eiji came up to me first thing in the morning, wrinkling his brow. What is it? Get your face out of mine! Isn't it about time to come and have a party at my house? Since when do we party together? This year, I finally started collecting reptiles. You're talking about Pets now? Anyway, I'm starting with a snake. Its name is Charlie, but it sure does hate this cold weather, I tell you. What are you trying to say? You want me to visit to visit Charlie? Exactly there. Exactly, yo! I think I didn't even need it to do that. There's something wrong with this kid. Oh, you don't say! 
楽しそうなお話ししてますね。You guys seem to be having fun. What are you talking about? ウサミさんも来るかい Ah, are you coming too? お誘いありがとうございます。宴会は地味に好きです。Thanks for inviting me. I absolutely love parties. ちゃんとお土産持ってきてね。Remember to bring a gift. ヘビさんにですか ?From Mr. Snake? うんうん、僕に。うんうん、from me! 死んだバッタとかでいいっすかね How's a dead grasshopper sound? だから僕にだってば I said it's for me! And with that, class commenced. During class, Yusami suddenly turned toward me. Tsubaki, kite naisu na. Tsubaki isn't here. You're right, do you think something happened? Kino gohan tabetan da nain desu ka? Did you guys have dinner together yesterday? No, I backed out at the last minute. Tsubaki, I think it's a little bit of 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 a little bit She's been avoiding me lately. That's true. Tsubaki rolled into school at the crack of noon. Mina, hello. Good morning, everyone. I thought she might have come down with the flu or something, but she seems energetic enough. Why so late? What were you doing? What were you doing? ちょっと昨日夜更かししちゃって。I pulled a bit of an all nighter yesterday. Moving preparations? うん、そんなとこかな。ちょっと日記つけたり、本読んでたりしてたの。Well, that too. I wrote in my diary and read for a bit. You're late because of that? Well, maybe she's just tired. You're moving? Huh? Where to? It's somewhere in the central district, right? Yeah, it's really close to where you live, Adai kun. Her voice jumped. It's no more than a ten minute walk from my place. ね、yep, it's gonna be great! Isn't it a new building too? Yeah. I had the guy show me a really good room. I think that's too bad. What? <laughs> Nothing. I just thought, you know. Your old place had a real homey feel to it. Oh, do you really have to bring that up? The smile disappeared from Tsubaki's lips. Oh, this is something I didn't expect. That. But my house is really old. There's always a draft. The walls have sand texture coatings, and we don't even have a heater. It's freezing during the winter. <laughs> well, I've always lived in the city, so I've wanted a house with its own outside door and yard. Ever since I was little. So, na no? H kun te zutto mansion da ta no? Really? You, you've always lived in an apartment? Yo ke yu kagikko da yo. Otou san o tanshi fu ni bakkari da shi. Okaa san mo yoru osoi kara ne. 
I'm a latchkey kid. My dad travels a lot, and my mom gets home really late. So, that's how it is. Tsubaki nodded gently. Just call me next time. I'll come and cook for you. Well, at least that part of Tsubaki doesn't seem to have changed. Thanks a lot. To tell you the truth, I get lonely often. Still, this is the first I've heard of Eiji's family situation. <laughs> Looks like I might have overdone it. Still, this is great. The whole tragic past thing works really well. Maybe next time I should go with the whole orphan angle. <laughs> I was an idiot for sympathizing with him, even for a moment. Now then, lunch break's almost over. I don't have much to do today, so I just go home and sleep. My headaches have been awful recently. Just as I was about to leave, Tsubaki called out to me. Something on her face tells me she's about to invite me somewhere. Adai-kun, could you keep me company for a while? Tsubaki has been a lot more forward lately. The first time she asked me out, she looked terrified. Um, wasn't I with you just yesterday? Is that a no? I, I heard there was a violin... Vi Va what? A violinist performing on Central Boulevard? Oh, really? On Central? Yep, I heard it was some kind of promotion at the mall. There's even an opportunity to go and shake hands with the performer afterward. Who's playing? Tsubaki flipped through her diary. After hearing the name, my heart began to waste. Is it one of these those events with free tickets and a chance to get a signature if you buy the CD afterward? That's right! It seems to be a small event. What do you think? We are going! My immediate answer made Tsubaki smile happily. But I can't believe you know about such obscure things. I looked into it yesterday. She looks a bit proud of herself. What about Hiroaki? Doesn't he have to go to kindergarten? He's on a break for his preschool. And the others? I forgot the names. That's taking care of them. Oh, what about moving preparations? Wait, am I nagging you? We can pack later tonight. If the worst comes to worst, we could do it tomorrow even. Well then, let's go. I really want to have some fun today. Tsubaki clung to my side, smiling flirtatiously. Hmm, she wants to get you. She's dedicated. By the time we left the department store, the sky was completely dark. Ah, live performances really are a wholly different experience. <laughs> You seem really happy. You even got two CDs. Of course. Maybe it's the release of tension after an activity, but the sensation of the chilly air against my flushed cheeks felt great. Thank you, Tsubaki. Let's go again sometime. 
Oh, that reminds me. Didn't you say you were getting a cell phone? Do you want me to go with you? Would you really? Thank you. Ah, uh, but aren't you short on time? It's already eight. There's nothing I need to do today. Really? Previously, she would have gone back by now for sure. But if she says it's okay, then it's probably fine. We casually strolled along the bustling streets. We wandered around town for two hours. We bought her a cell phone and had dinner together. Now then... Hey, Adai-kun, where do you want to go next? I spoke without thinking. Hey now, it's already 10. Even I want to go home. <laughs> oh, now she's disappointed, I would bet. I don't have a specific job right now, but I have to check my accumulated mail daily. Can we go to the arcade? Do you play games, Adai-kun? What happened to you? Tsubaki's attitude bothered me. Uh -oh. <laughs> what do you mean? Are you the type to stay out this late? I don't think there are any strings of words as incompatible as Tsubaki and the arcade at night. What are you talking about? Couples are always playing those crane games, aren't they? I want to try one of those things. Couples? You are not a couple yet. N not yet. He said you can go on and try more, but... What happened to the Tsubaki I once knew? No matter how much she likes me, she's being strangely forceful about wanting to hang out. What did the night owl in you suddenly awaken? <laughs> Maybe you might be right. Tsubaki maintained her playful attitude. It's not like we're doing anything bad. It's not a problem to be late for school once in a while, and there's nothing wrong with going to the arcade. Still, something strange. I hear that once a hardworking person learns to slack off, there's nothing that can cure them. I was only half joking, but Tsubaki's expression suddenly became frightful. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just feel so much better when I'm having fun. Well, that's so true. The problem is I can't... It's... it's, it's I don't know what, what it is, but it's recently really hard for me even to start playing anything that's really, really fun. I play games that are addictive, like Warframe, but... Uh, this is so much fun on, on, so many, on so many levels, but still, sometimes I just can't get myself to just go on and recall. I, and I don't know why. <sighs> but anyway... Huh? When I'm out with you, I can't forget about all the hateful things and everything feels light and easy. I know that I can't continue like this, but that thought just makes it all the more pleasurable. Way to drop a bomb. It was a joke. She laughed happily. I think I've only seen that kind of laughter, the kind with her mouth wide open and the tea shining recently. Let's just head home. We can go to the arcade next time. Sure, sorry for asking too much. It's good to see that she's still in as earnest as always. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> I feel like I'm being observed. It's just your imagination. Let's go. I'll walk you home. She shook her head. But, Adai-kun, I... She's about to open up again. I think I've put up with too much up until now. Maybe it's that release of tension from having the incident resolved. But she looks like she's being possessed by something. The devil? Thanks for coming all this way. The air over here is really nice. I let out a big yawn. I can see a lot more stars out here than I can from my apartment in the central district. Do you want to come in for a bit? If I did, I'd miss the train. Why not stay the night? I think that would allow you, of all people. Even if your dad allows it, I won't allow it. Don't tell me you were hoping to go to the school together tomorrow. <laughs> so you won't bite? If Eiji and Yusami saw us, I don't even want to think about the trouble that would ensue. Haru-chan is a person who is a Haru-chan would make fun of someone for that, wouldn't she? I'm not saying she'd make fun of us per se, I just think she'd crack some stupid joke and leave. Yeah, well, uh, Haru-chan is pretty strange sometimes. Mm-hmm, I'd say so. Speaking of which... It's really, a really long time since we saw Noriko or Shida Tori. Those are two characters which were almost completely neglected for quite a long time now. I knew it. Tsubaki hasn't been getting along with Yusami. Oh yeah, can I get your cell number? Sure. At that moment, I heard footsteps from behind me and turned around. Huh? Ah, Onei-chan! You're home! Wait, Hiroaki! Where have you been? I went to get ice cream bars! In his hand was a con convenient store bag. A alone? Why did you do that? That's way too dangerous! Tsubaki was furious and closed the distance between herself and her brother. You idiot! Where's dad? Dad looked really busy, so I sneaked out by myself. I'm a proud, stupid kid after getting held hostage. And so, you just went out alone? Did I do something bad? Where, where did you get the money? Wow! This is something you don't do. You just don't go to m on the money of other people. I bought it from your money box. <laughs> her lips were trembling. I could hear her agitated breathing. Tsubaki opened her eyes wide. Hiroaki? Onei-chan's feelings? Hiroaki, don't you understand my feelings? Hiroaki, a bad man took you away, remember? 
I told you, it wasn't a bad man. He just stroked me a little bit so that I got unconscious. But this is not bad. Yes, he was. We were all so worried about you. Maybe Tsubaki had frightened him. Hiroaki quickly became frank. I'm, I'm sorry. His little head drooped down. <laughs> Tsubaki stared at her brother, dissatisfied. My eyes tr trickled down her arm as it dangled powerlessly at her side and came upon a tightly clenched fist. <laughs> Maybe Hiroaki had been expectantly waiting for Tsubaki's forgiveness. Don't make me worry like that. Maybe like always, Hiroaki was anticipating Tsubaki's warm embrace. Jesus Christ! Dad, why did you ever take your eyes off of him? Tsubaki continued muttering weak complaints. She just said that, didn't she? S sorry, Onechan. Did I make you worry? <sighs> hey, Tsubaki, calm down a bit. <sighs> Yeah, I know. I finally found an opportunity to intervene. But didn't you come home really late too? She's an adult. She is a freaking adult. She is allowed to stay out late. Even if it's irresponsible, she is allowed to. You are a little kid. And little kids have to listen to their to their older families, at least to her mother and and father, and maybe also to the older siblings if they show that they can take responsibility. Otherwise, <sighs> Tokyo. There's nothing wrong with me doing such things. I'm a grown-up. Uh, sorry, Higoaki-kun. I was out playing with your sister. That's why we were so late. Things are getting complicated, so I try to salvage the situation. Even though... I was happy with Mr. Horse. I was lonely too. I get really lonely when I can't be with Oni-chan. So play with me. Wait, does he have not any friends he can play with? No friends at all? I mean, is his sister the only person he is playing with the whole time? That's odd. <laughs> Tsubaki didn't nod in response. He was not I have to finish packing for the move. Tsubaki moved her gaze away from Hiroaki. Well then, good night. Uh, yeah, s see you tomorrow. After we exchanged phone numbers, we made some small talk and parted. Wow, this is a pretty wash. This is a pretty wash, Tsubaki. Okay, I think on that note, I'm gonna leave this episode right here. I hope you enjoyed it so far, even though this was a pretty dark episode, more or less. It... Leave a like if you did enjoy it with me. And yeah, maybe leave some suggestions in the comments about what I could do different. Even though it's a little bit late to ask for that, but anyway. <sighs> Stay tuned for more.